What about fasting? I know so many people that are doing water fasts and juice fasts and it's in Have they told you why? I've had an evolution yes. uh, yeah. with the way I think about fasting. Um, when I first kind of, you know, was stepping out of the box and what's happening in menopause and why was my body composition, I didn't know what to call it back then, but what was all this going on that was new? And all my patients were having it as well. And these were my, my girlfriends. I worked in a small town with a big university and these are PhDs and we're running marathons. We're doing all this stuff and everyone's kind of complaining of the same thing. And so fasting seems to be helpful. And my girlfriends were trying, we all kind of did this fasting thing. And I was like, super excited about it. Everybody felt better, blah, 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 blah. Okay. So fast forward, I'm learning more about hormones, body composition, protein intake, all of these needs. And suddenly as I'm counseling my patients, I'm realizing I can't meet my own protein goals if I'm trying to fast at the same time. And I quickly realized if we're looking at health span, if we're looking at body composition, there may not be a lot of room for fasting for these patients, you know, or for my girlfriends, you know, and it is really difficult for my patients to re reach their nutrition goals. So never at the expense of meeting your basic nutrition goals and your calorie needs. And it is really, really hard to do while fasting. So you may get a short term benefit with weight loss, mm -hmm. but there really doesn't now. Dr. Sims can get into the nitty gritty of, all you know. All but the things. basic idea of fasting, if we want to use the term fasting, we have to look at it as, are we talking about intermittent fasting or time-restricted eating? So intermittent fasting is kind of like, you know, your water fast, your five-day, two-day, all that kind of crazy stuff, which for the most part, men can get away with and have a positive impact on body composition, but women can't. If we want to talk about time-restricted eating and working with our circadian rhythm, which is optimal, then you have breakfast within a, or food within a half an hour of waking up that helps dampen that um, ghrelin and cortisol response I talked about before so that everything's coming down, your hormones are starting to work properly, and your body's like, great, I'm ready to go. I can, I can handle this. And then you're eating at regular intervals, and I try to have people have protein and fiber at every eating interval so that they are maximizing protein and fiber intake. Then you have dinner, and then you don't what eat do you mean after dinner. Every eating interval. So breakfast, maybe you have a snack. If we're looking at training or exercise, if you're splitting your breakfast, then you're having some protein and carb before, you're having the rest of your protein or more protein afterwards, and then you're having uh, uh, some protein and some fiber at lunch. So you're having you know, maybe tempeh or tofu or salmon with salad or fruit and veg. So every time you're eating, you have a, a protein and fiber focus. So time-restricted eating is within a 24-hour period? So you're looking at, I'm going to eat during the day when my body needs it. Yeah. And I'm going to stop eating when I finish dinner. So I have about a two, maybe three hour break before I go to bed. Mm -hmm. So that when I go to bed, I'm not trying to digest food. My body can get into the parasympathetic responses it needs to, to sleep well for reparation. And then I eat again at what time? When you wake up in the it's morning. It's typically about 12 hours of eating yeah. and 12 hours of not. So you're trying yeah. to follow that circadian rhythm and work with your hormones. It can also... When we do have that period of time, which maybe that sounds very intuitive, but a lot of people are eating at 10 p.m., they're snacking on food, then they're trying to go to bed, and then they're getting up. When you give your body a little bit longer, so at 12 hours time is when your body will really efficiently be using up all your glucose, really dropping some of those insulin levels, but it's not so much that it's stressful, and we're using stress very generically here, but on a cellular level, long periods of fasting for women specifically can be very stressful to the body. Mm -hmm. And that's why if you think about Stacey's example of what happened in two fasting periods to, you know, a man and a woman, different things are going to happen to your body if it thinks it's being in starvation. So we don't want to put your body in a starved state. We're just trying to give it a time period without food so that it can start to process the energy that's available differently. Why, why not though? What's going to happen? I understand from what we talked about earlier that my fertility, my, my cycle is going to change. Mm -hmm. But is that it? Well, there's, there's adaptive stress and then there's stress to the point of you're, you're hurting yourself. Men can, you said that men can do longer fasts. They can, they can do longer fasts and it can show to actually, you know, be something that might be advantageous for them for how their body is made, might increase their focus and some other metrics. But for women, these longer periods are actually going to promote more visceral fat storage and become pro-inflammatory. And you said it a little casually, but 
disrupting your hypothalamus and shutting off your hormone system will cause a low estrogen state. And that's very problematic as we've talked about. So thinking about your body should not be in a starved state. So utilizing time-restricted eating, meaning I'm going to eat within my circadian rhythm, the hours that there is sun outside, mm -hmm. back what, how your body's made to function is working with your biology. If you're saying, I'm going to not eat for three days because I'm doing this fasting period, for women, that's going to induce a stressful state where you're going to start to store more as visceral fat and cause more inflammation. And if we bring it into the, you know, people holding a fast till noon or after, you're phase shifting. So it's like you're having social jet lag, where if you're phase shifting your hormone responses, your appetite hormones, then you're not going to get into a good sleep because your body's like, it's not time to go to sleep. Your melatonin peak in women usually peaks around nine o'clock. So you start to get sleepy. That gets shifted to 11, 12. So you're not actually going to get good sleep because you now have reset your melatonin responses. So we want women to understand that time-restricted eating when you're not eating when in the dark is really <laughs> beneficial. Right? Easiest way to say it. Easiest way to say it, yeah. You're fueling for your body during the day because that's when it needs the fuel. That's when we want to be able to create uh, an environment that's supportive to hormone health, supportive to muscle growth, to brain health, to all the things, and reducing stress when we can control that stress. So when you start phase shifting and holding fast and creating this stress on a circadian level, knowing that there's a circadian response on every cell as well as a total body circadian rhythm, that if you shift that, then we start seeing a lot of metabolic dysfunction, poor sleep. And unfortunately, we see this in shift workers because that's mm -hmm. what's happening. They're having circadian shift. And they have significantly lower longevity. They live, what, I, th I think I had 14 years less if you're working night shifts. I don't know. That, so you have that. higher rates of infertility, higher rates of pregnancy loss. You, you're more metabolically unhealthy. Of course, we're generalizing a group of people. Right. And sometimes I think we've all had moments of, of life where shift work was part of what we had to do. But night shift work, most people are not getting enough sleep during the day. Right. And they're what we call flipping back and forth, right? Because you want to be on a daytime schedule on your off days and live your life. Your family. That you're constantly sacrificing what your body needs. And what I tell people is you may, if you can get off of that, it, it will be a healthier life pattern. But in moments where it's not, you need to really prioritize trying to get enough sleep, making sure that you're taking care of yourself in the other time periods because you're set up for a place that is going to cause hormone dysfunction and impact your metabolic health. Mm -hmm. You believe the same, I believe. I uh, advocate uh, feeding ourselves mm -hmm. for optimum health. To be any kind of active, you must feed yourself and um, stop eating three, time, three hours before bed. So what do you think of people that do these longer fasts? Do you think that they've just been given poor advice? Because I know, I was talking about Mel earlier, and I know she does frequently does three-day fasts. Because I think people think they've heard this term. Autophagy. Autophagy yeah. is the term. Take it, Stacey. So this is the thing with autophagy. <laughs> you get that with exercise. So the idea of autophagy is recycling the sum of the parts of cells that have broken down or uh, somehow become dysfunctional. So your body's really good at cleaning that out. We see with exercise, it invokes that autophagy. With fasting, it invokes that too, but not the severe fasting, like three-day fast, that kind of stuff. When we're looking at the telomere changes that people will say with fasting, you get that with exercise. So telomere is um, points that we look on the DNA to see how you're aging. So we want longer telomere length because that means you are more stress resilient. You get that with exercise because exercise is a big stress. It creates a, a change within, like we were talking about before, Adapt. yeah, adaptive stress, epigenetic changes, which improves all of those markers that people are so adamant fasting does. What about fasting and then doing exercise? So fasted exercise, is that? <laughs> <laughs> For women, no. That's the what you taught me. For men, it, I'm going to say no as well, because when we're looking at the fueling mechanics of exercise, muscle is a very metabolically active tissue. Mm -hmm. If your body is trying to fuel itself, it's going to break down the very first thing that's creating a energetic need, which is muscle. Mm 
We see in women, women so you're lose muscle. Mm -hmm, you're going to break it down and use the amino acids as fuel. You can tap into blood glucose and some fat, but when you aren't bringing blood glucose up through eating first, it's really hard for your body to understand that this is what you want it to do. So it's like, okay, I need to conserve fat. I'm, I don't want to go through all the glucose that I have because I need it for brain health. So I'm going to start feeding more amino acids in to fuel what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. For women, we already use more amino acid than men. So if we're looking at fasted training, then we're already increasing the amount of lean mass that our body's going to break down to use as fuel. I'm pretty sure it was you that told me there's this part of the brain that's kind of checking if there's energy in our blood, if there's glucose in our blood. That's part of the, our hypothalamus. And so the hypothalamus is this sensor that's kind of checking. And in a woman, again, correct me when I butcher this, but if it understands that there's no glucose in the blood, then it's going to go into that survival state, which is going to start to shut things down, mm -hmm. which means growth of muscle isn't going to be possible. Um, because once upon a time, I guess that stress without the fuel would have been a threat, especially in the context of like my menstrual cycle and my reproductive health. That's a good way of, of wrapping it up. Yeah, it's not that we don't have blood glucose. It's low blood glucose and no nutrients coming in that the hypothalamus is sensing. So we're looking at neuropeptide responses within the brain, within the hypothalamus that controls appetite hormone, uh, the way that your body's using fuel. So if we don't have stuff coming in, the hypothalamus is like, oh, wait a second, what's going on here? Is it fair to say the woman's body is more, I was going to say stubborn, but that's slightly negative, word, less flexible? Than, than a man's more complex it's complex it's complex and it more stress to resilient itself. it's very much stress resilient so it's very defendable it's trying to protect you it mm -hmm. really is looking at how what is it going to do to keep your functions happening in balance, in balance. Mm -hmm. but because women can get pregnant and pregnancy is not a health neutral state it's a huge strain on the body mm -hmm. that is an extra layer of one of the things that sometimes decides I'm going to put this to the side because I'm going to protect, keep you functioning. I want to work on all of our other body functions. We're going to shut off that side that's not sending out FSH and LH and making reproductive hormones. Because we can't afford to keep you healthy, then we definitely can't afford to grow a baby and keep and you healthy. If you are pregnant and go through times of severe stress, illness, injury, your body will eject what is in the womb through a miscarriage or you know early pregnancy loss or mis or um, preterm labor because it is always going to try to protect you first mm -hmm. so you're at higher risk of a failed pregnancy mm -hmm. i wonder if i could frame mel's your question about mel and the way i i frame all the advice whether it's research advice or internet advice is you have to know what your goal is what is mel's goal or your goal, or because listen, they're exclusive. Longevity, if longevity is your goal, like live longer at any cost, well, then there's a lot of research about severe calorie restriction and lifestyle and just lots of severe ways to live. Okay, if that's longevity is your goal, that's your goal. If your goal is peak performance, like a pro athlete, that is a different kind of life and training and reps and peak performance at the pro level doesn't necessarily get you longevity. Mm -hmm. Pro athletes live less, at least contact athletes live less than people focus on longevity. But the third bucket that most of us live in is health span and wellness. Yep. It's neither high performance, live less time, and it's neither austerity, live the longest possible. It is the middle ground. It's the homeostasis balance. And so when questions like that come up, the first question is my mind is, which bucket are you in? Are you in a peak performance? You're going to do different kind of training, different kind of eating. We know you may have a decreased lifespan because of the stress you put on versus this. So what are we working for? I think a lot of the people that talk about these fasts often say to me, especially when they're referring to juice fasts, that it's kind of like cleaning out the system. You have they, a liver. <laughs> they say it's like, it's like cleaning but out. But you don't need to Salt clean out. You, that's not how you clean out your system. <laughs> Taking the fiber out of those fruits and vegetables. And taking away all the things that you juice need. Juice is 500 calories of pure glucose. Yeah. What glucose. if it's vegetable juicing? 
Why not just eat the the vegetables and get the fiber for your guts? But you have a liver. Your liver. I think it's marketing. That's a marketing. I think they're falling prey to marketing. Tell me what. And that's a big wellness trend. I know, but it's it's massive. Honestly, you would. uh, Yeah, I know so many people. So many of my best friends going on detox wellness retreats. (laughs) Well, even when I ask them why they're doing a water fast, they say I'm just detoxing. Or when I ask them why they're grinding up this fruit and vegetable and as you say pulling out all the fiber from it it feels more attainable to say i'm doing this crazy thing for three days then i'm going to make a life switch to just live a more preventive